Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. My name is John. I'm an alcoholic. First of all, I, I want uh, to thank Sarah and Alex uh, for uh, taking such good care of me and, and, and getting me here and, and uh, making sure I'm comfortable while I'm here. And I want to thank you both personally. I want to thank all of the people, the hosts, the people on whatever committees it is <coughs> that put this thing together. Uh, and and, and I'm, I mean that for all of us. Uh, <coughs> I'm not, I am speaking just for me, uh, but not just for making it possible for me, but anybody that had anything to do with putting Tiki Paul together and making it possible for all of us. I want to thank you, and it means a lot to me. Uh, and uh, there's something else I want to say. I have to say it, that most of the time, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, I'll tell you that it's I'm real grateful to be sober, and it's one of the most important facts of my life. Uh, and and right now it's it's a little different, and and I'm real grateful for it. And, and, and that is is that I'm grateful we're sober, all of us, and it means a lot to me, man. It does. I'm real grateful for that, man, because I don't believe there would be much me without us, and I mean that. Uh, my my sobriety date is December 9th of 2001. That's the most important <clears throat> date of my life, man. And, and uh, uh, I probably am not going to talk much of, of what I will tell you, what I was like in my drink and man. Hopefully I won't spend too much uh, time in, in doing that. And in case... You know, in case nobody knows, I have to say this first, man. In case somebody in here does not know, you never have to take another drink of alcohol another day in your life unless you want to. And you can breathe now, man. I can remember the, the first time that a guy <clears throat> told me that. I won't say his name, but he said, son, I'll tell you three things. And I was shaking like a lost dog in the rain. And he said, he said son, I'll tell you three things. Uh, and number one is you never have to drink again another day in your life unless you want to. And I can remember by the look in his eyes, he meant it, man. And I can remember breathe, exhaling. And and he said another thing. He says you never have to be alone again another day in your life, man, unless you want to. And I said, God, dog, he meant that, man. And he said third and most importantly is the program of Alcoholics Anonymous does not fail. It works 100%, and it's nothing personal. <clears throat> the, the steps have changed my life in a way in which uh, I could not have ever imagined. And uh, I probably won't be able to describe it all in words. I don't have a very big vocabulary uh, to do it. You know what? I've, I've put a couple of words together. Put a couple of words together that about sums it up, and and that is, you know, words can't explain what words can't explain. I can't, I can't describe what I can't describe, man. And let me tell you, since I've been a member of the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, I've seen more beautiful experiences and and had more beautiful experiences that that just blow my mind, man. And I love them. I love them, and I, I want more of them. I used to be the kind of person who always wanted one more drink or one more whatever you'd give me, man. And today, I'll tell you what, I, I still am stuck on one. But I'll tell you, I want one more day, man. I want to say, I want to do one more inventory. I want to do one more, make one more amend and get a little bit closer to somebody and, 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 and help one more drunk, man. I'm always stuck on one more. And it's good for me, man. It keeps me coming back. Y'all don't have to tell me. I'm real grateful for it. Uh, I'll tell you that one of the first times when I look back on my, my drinking, 
uh, and I, 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 I could see the, the progression of my alcoholism. And, and, and let me tell you, and this is important that I say, uh, that I suffer from the disease of alcoholism. Uh, and, and just as if a person has cancer or, or diabetes, that person can follow a certain course of action and live relatively free from the symptoms of those diabetes. It's the same with my alcoholism. I take a certain course of action and I can live relatively, relatively free from the symptoms of my alcoholism. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for it, man. And, and I wanted it. I wanted it when I knew it existed. There's been little to no resistance, man, on my part. And, and I, if I, if I, if I'm going to clear this up real quick. If I talk arrogantly, my arrogance is in my creator. My arrogance is in the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I know that uh, if I take the same steps, that, uh, that if I take the same actions that men and women have been taking for 71 years now, then uh, more than likely I'll live a, a fairly happy, peaceful, and free existence in life. And, and I'm real confident in that. And, and my arrogance and confidence is in you people uh, and, and, and what I've been taught. So please don't take it the wrong way. I, I looked back and, and, and I had been drinking alcoholically for some time, but I, I'll tell you, my, <clears throat> one day I went to school and <clears throat> I don't know why, because I never did around this time, <laughs> but I, <clears throat> I had gotten out of school and I was about 16 years old uh, and, 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 and I had gotten out of school and this was around the Mad Dog 2020 era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, it was before all the, the fruit punch flavors. I believe the only two flavors were orange and grape. <laughs> two fifty a fifth. Uh, and, and I used to, my weekends consisted of standing outside of a liquor store begging grown-ups to go in and buy me a, a fifth. And please don't run off with my money. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had that happen a couple of times. And I started to slick slide it in. Please don't run off with my money. Man, I just want to fit the cheap wine. Man. <laughs> and uh, I've been drinking it a lot, man. And and, and I, I came home from school one day, and a few friends of mine had skipped school. And were already two sheets in the wind, man. And they automatically handed me a fifth of orange. Uh, and I popped the bottom of it, shake it up, and I took the cap off real quick and and I put it up to my mouth, man, and as soon as I got something in my mouth, my system wouldn't accept it. I I, I wanted to, to, it, it tried to kick it right back out, and and uh, I can remember at that second, my heart started racing real fast, man. And I said, my God, that got to be some kind of freak accident, man. <laughs> I did, and and so, so I tried it again, and as soon as, Soon as the, the the wine touched my tongue, my system rejected it again uh, and again. I, and and uh, the reason I point that out is is because I felt as though someone would hold me over a cliff, and as though my life depended on being able to get that wine down me. Uh, and it scared me that I couldn't. Then I uh, never knew. Uh, I have I, before. I hadn't looked at that experience and saw how that uh, me being able to or not being able to get that wine in my body scared the death out of me, man. And 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 I I'll tell you uh, that that uh, I believe that every time I drank, I drank alcoholically. Uh, I love I love. Uh, the way booze taste and I love what it did to me and I loved it every time there wasn't one day that I put booze inside of me in which uh, <clears throat> I was good man I was good anything that went on I could be okay with with booze and uh, 
having a having a lot of difficulties at at home. Uh, one of the last days, one of the last days that uh, I was to spend, I was spending the night at uh, my mama's house, uh, and she just by chance went to work and and she messed up and left me up there by myself and uh she had these these bottles of wine sitting by her as soon as you would walk in the door you would almost trip over them uh and i uh, my mind convinced me that day that i could take those bottles of wine and sell them uh and and get me some coke 45 or some ice house uh, <clears throat> And so, and so I took about four or five of the bottles and I left one. One of them had a razor back on it in which my mom is a huge razor back fan. So I, I dared not touch that one. Uh, but I took, there was a woman who always drank out on her balcony and I called her a booze hound because she always drank wine out on her balcony. I took them around that tour and uh, she bought all of them for like 20 bucks and I walked them to the Circle K and Bought me a couple of 40 ounces and uh, drank them. And uh, I was sitting on her couch when she came home. And let me tell you that uh, I did. I just skipped forward along a lot of, uh, over a lot of experiences. Uh, I had done a lot of damage uh, up until this point. And let me tell you that uh this was uh, the last. I'm not going to go into everything that I, I did in between. Man, let, let me tell you, I drank uh, booze viciously, uh, and I don't I, I, I don't say that I did any worse than anybody else in this room. I I, I don't uh, believe in comparing. I don't want to uh, say that mine is any worse or any better than anyone else's. I think that's that's irrelevant to me. Uh, <clears throat> I did what I did, and 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 uh, uh, on this day, my mom never brought my brother home from work, uh, and 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 that's pretty much my whole family is my mom and my brother. Never brought him home with her a day before, and she did this day, and and those bottles of wine, I believe she wouldn't find or she wouldn't notice missing. As soon as she walks in the door, she says, "JB, where's my wine?" and I. Being the genius that I am, said, "What wine?" <laughs> and uh, she said, "That's she said that's it, man. That's good." And and, and I'll tell you, I, I'm sitting on on the couch, man, and and my mom comes over to me and and uh, she proceeds to tell me that uh, she says, "I love you. Thank you so much." She says, "Son." I love you because I gave birth to you and I carried you around for nine months and you're a big baby. <laughs> she said that. And uh, she said, but you know what? I don't like you, son. And and, and, and my brother, she, she walked off to get some of my belongings that I had left there. And my brother walked up to me and said, John, do you have another family somewhere in which you don't steal from and you don't just destroy because you do that to us. And he said, I'm just curious to know, do you have another one in which you treat good? And maybe that'll bring me some comfort. That'll make me feel a little better. And, and, and I sat there and couldn't say anything. And I remember on this day, they proceeded to, to do that to me, man, for, for about 10, 15 minutes. And uh, I can remember sitting there listening to them and agreeing with everything that they said about me, man. Every single thing they said about me. I was a, a piece of dirt, man. Piece of dirt. And I'll tell you that I wound it up downtown. Somebody had told me I could uh, go and stay at the Memphis Union Mission downtown. And uh, they would put me up for free. Uh, and so I did. I went down there and, and uh, was able to stay for a little while and I continued to drink a little while uh, and I started to go to this recovery dynamics class a guy named Benny Benny H 
taught the class who is who is my teacher. Uh, I have uh, his sobriety today. His sobriety was mine, and I took it, and I love it. And uh, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. Uh, but I went to his class for a little while, and I'll tell you, December the 8th of 2001 is, uh, to me, is every bit just as important as my sobriety date is, and I'll tell you why. Because on December the 8th of 2001, I woke up that morning on a on a chapel floor with about 100 grown men who all of them smelled like ass and anything else you can think of. Uh, I woke up on the same floor with them, and I had... Uh, probably more than a thousand reasons why I shouldn't drink alcohol and I couldn't grab a hold of one of them and uh, not drinking. I woke up that morning and, and uh, the thought crossed my head that I could make up a sobriety date and uh, go buy me a 40 ounce of beer and I could lie about it and say I, I didn't drink it so before I knew it I was purchasing it at the corner of Poplar and Danny Thomas. I walked around the side of it and to show you how how uh how God works, man, I was fixing to crack that sucker open and our old man, Mr. Haywood, was walking across the street, he turned around and looked at me and said, Boy, you know you shouldn't be drinking that And I said, Yes, sir, I know that Mr. Haywood and proceeded to dr- to drink it. And uh <clears throat> I'll tell you I after I got done with it and I'm telling my mind saying I'm gonna I've already made up a sobriety date and I'm not gonna tell a soul, I just drank. And I walk back to the mission and I walk straight through it. I walk right out on the patio and I walk straight up to the first person in AA I knew, Kelly G, and he's still sober today and I love him. Walk straight up to him and said, Kelly, I just drank alcohol. And I didn't want to, man. And 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 let me tell you, uh that at that very second I surrendered to alcohol and all that it did to me. And I accepted that without somebody's help, man, without some help, alcohol would continue to have its way with me as if I was a newborn baby and weak. And I accepted that. I accepted. And Kelly said magical words to me, man. He said, John, I still love you. And he said, we'll try it again tomorrow. And I said, man, I just drank you, didn't? And he said, we'll try it again tomorrow. And I hadn't had a drink since that day, and I'm very proud of that. I'll tell you the the kind of acceptance, man. Let me. Uh, and 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 my life did not begin to improve until I I surrendered my until I surrendered all of me uh, and 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 and. Uh, the best way I can I can put uh, the, uh, the the degree of acceptance that uh, that uh, I embraced what the program of Alcoholics Anonymous had for me. Uh, a friend of mine tells me this story about this this cellmate he had, man, and they was in two o one Poplar, and uh, he was sitting and talking with this guy, man, and the guy says. I've got friends out in, he says, I've got family in Olive Branch, Mississippi. And somebody told me that if a person is incarcerated in Olive Branch, they can have family members come and have picnics with you. Uh, and he said, I think the next time I go to jail, I'm going to, I'm going to break the law in Olive Branch so I can have picnics with my family. <laughs> he did. He did. And I said, damn, man, that's powerful, man. <laughs> that is powerful. The thought never occurred to do to not break the law anymore. He was totally okay with the fact that he was going to stay incarcerated and continue to break the law. But the next time he broke the law, he was going to be in Olive Branch, Mississippi. That's beautiful to me, man. <laughs> it is. That is acceptance. It is. That is acceptance.
and 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 it's it's important that I say this too is 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 uh, that uh, that I I I believe in uh, I believe in uh, the 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 uh, the suggested. I'm a big I'm, I love the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I haven't said that that I love the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous and and it saved my life. It has saved my life with the help of a sponsor who uh, has taken a lot of time to sit down with me and read word by word the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous and take me through our suggested 12 steps to recovery. Uh, and, and that's the way it was taught to me that uh, this this is a suggested program, not a program of suggestions. And 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 you know what? If uh, I'm real glad that uh, that my sponsor burned certain things into my mind, man, uh, to where I, I know without a shadow of a doubt today uh, that I can get and stay sober, stay sober on a one day at a time basis, man. And and let me tell you that uh, I was taken through the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous uh, when I was about a year and a half sober. And uh, and and I knew and and let me tell you I, I I went to a lot of been to a lot of AA meetings and uh, I did a, a four step uh, exactly the way the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous says to do it uh, and 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 it was it was it was re- it was told to me very clearly uh, how to do it and and. Uh, I wasn't afraid of it because I knew I knew of the results that would come behind it, uh, and I wanted them. I wanted them. I knew I would be one step further away from drinking again, and one step closer to peace and contentment. And 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 so I wasn't afraid. And let me tell you, it uh, it I, I did a lot of writing, uh, and 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 and, and uh, did. I'll tell you, I had a lot of help. I had a lot of help because I believe a lot of the information that I discovered in my fourth step uh, was beyond me, and I was incapable of seeing without help. Uh, and and when I was done, uh, my sponsor and myself. Sat down, and uh, my sponsor proceeded to. Uh, we sat down with my fourth step, and he proceeded to uh, assume the role as a, a prosecuting attorney of of each of each and every individual that I had written down. And he he needed to do that uh, with me. Uh, and and let me tell you, after doing that for. Uh, a few hours after doing that for a few hours, uh, and 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 it was important for me to get to the truth uh, because my mind only told me lies. It only pointed out to me what you had done to me, uh, and I had good reason to be resentful and be angry. Uh, and and so after doing that for a certain period of time, uh, I was able to to get to the truth a lot easier. Uh, and, and, and I have to, uh, say that in about two years sober, uh, about two years sober, I had made virtually no amends. I had made virtually no amends and, uh, I was fortunate enough to get an amends sponsor. And my sponsor is, is is very clear, and and a lot of people say that there is a miracle that happens in the twelve steps, and and I've heard lots of people say they don't know exactly where it is, just work all twelve of them, and it's it's guaranteed to happen. Well, my my sponsor will tell you that uh, his experience is uh, it's as a result of of making amends, uh, and and I, I was fortunate enough to be a real big thief. 
uh, uh, when I was drinking. And I'm very sarcastic when I say fortunate enough. Uh, and let me tell you that by the time I made it to the amends, and, and I believe that my sponsor's experience became mine, uh, and it's important that you all know this, that uh, I had a great experience in, in doing my fourth step. I had a powerful experience in, in uh, the fifth step, and I, I got everything that I was supposed to get from uh, from it, and I, I went, uh, I went, and uh, when I start hearing noises, I just better stop moving. Don't touch anything and stop moving. <laughs> and 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 I, I had great experiences. I I took my hour uh, after I was done, and 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 looked over what I was supposed to look over, and and asked myself the questions. Uh, like I'm supposed to. And, and let me tell you that uh, the most powerful experience I've ever had in my entire life uh, was, was as a result of making amends and paying back folks' money. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story, and I'll make it quick. When I was 16 years old, I worked at Sonic drive through I was a cook. And uh, one night I was cleaning. The manager was kind enough to, to help us clean and and I, I found myself over by the cash drawer, and I looked down and seen a little brown envelope that had a dollar sign and $1,000 that I would have sworn he left for me. <laughs> and uh, so I, I kindly bent over and picked it up and, and went, found some trash, found the trash, and I threw it in some trash, made it look like trash, that I'm taking this out to the trash, took the trash out, came back in and proceeded to help him look for it. The envelope for about two hours, for about two hours, and finally I said, "Look, man, I, I've helped you look for it. If you won't strip me down, I don't have the money. I'm leaving." He said, "No, I don't want you to strip. Just go." <laughs> said, "Just go." And I'll tell you how cocky I was. I'll tell you how bad I was at that age. I went back and got the envelope, the money, and and by the time I'm about three stores down, I'm crossing. Minden Hall in Winchester, I'm counting the money, and it's $850. I want to go back and tell them they shorted me $150. <laughs> because it had a 1000 written on it. So, so I owed Sonic Drive through $850, and let me tell you, thank you. That by the time I was on this step, I wished that I was doing my fourth step again. I do. Uh, and and, and uh, that experience plus uh, a, a uh, Piggly Wiggly that I used to shoplift from on a, regular, <laughs> on a regular basis. I knew a single mother who had about seven kids, and uh, I would steal her food and sell it to her at good price. Uh, and I did that for a period of about three or four months. And... and my sponsor had me to round up, and I rounded up to five hundred dollars. And uh, so, in addressing these two amends, uh, I withdrew two checks, one for eight hundred and fifty, and one for five hundred dollars. Uh, and I called them early that morning, and and with the Sonic uh, drive-through, I, I said, "Sir, you don't know me, but I worked with your company." I called the corporate office, said, "You don't know me, but I worked for you." Uh, for your company at about 16 years old, and I have some money that belongs to you. And he got freaked out on me. He was like, no, 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 you know, I don't think that you do. And I said, hold on, sir, slow down. I said, the question is not if I have your, some money that belongs to you. The question is, will you see me and let me give it back to you? And he said, okay, come by at 1 o'clock. And I did the same with Piggly Wiggly and set up a time for one thirty, And... And uh, I went out, I went to the corporate offices of Sonic, and I, I sat behind this guy's desk, man, and I told him that, that I'm a member of a 12-step program, and, and it's real, it's vital for me to do this in order for me to continue to live the way I've been living. And, and uh, I slid an $850 check across his desk and said, is there anything else I can do? except for giving you your money back, man, to, to make it right between us. And he said, wow. He said, wow, son, I don't know what it is that you're doing, but keep on doing it. And I went 
I went to the to the Piggly Wiggly corporate offices and, and, and I sat behind the guy's desk man and I slid him a five hundred dollar check and I said, Is there anything else I can do besides this? Besides pay you back what I owe you to make it right between us. I'm willing to do it. And and, and uh, he said the same thing, wow, except he said and he said, Thank you for giving me uh, something to talk about with my friends for a couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he said, no, but just keep doing what you're doing, son. And and, and, and the, what's more important than that is, is at about two years sober, I, I, I don't know how to describe uh, other than to say uh, I, I, I had a lot of questions revolving around a lot of things that have to do with, with Alcoholics Anonymous and me. And, and the path uh, that that I found myself on. And, and uh, let me tell you that when I got back home, when I got back home, man, I, I went to my bedroom, man, and, and I, I wanted to be grateful to some. I wanted to be grateful uh, and to express that gratitude uh, to uh, to uh, who I think is, is responsible for uh, placing me around you people who uh, gave me access to the sponsor that I have. Uh, I wanted to express that to uh, to this person, and, and I did. <clears throat> I did, and, and I said thank you a bunch of times, uh, and, and, and I said that... Uh, that I don't know how I was able to muster the willingness to do that. Uh, I said, I'm glad that I didn't spend too much time thinking about it, or I might have changed my mind. Uh, and, 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 and I'll tell you that, that when I stood up, uh, I didn't see anything. I didn't feel much out, outside of a, an extreme gratitude and uh but i i'll tell you what when i stood up man i was uh, the picture was a lot more clear uh it was as clear as it's ever been and 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 uh, i knew for certain uh that i wasn't where i was and i didn't just do that uh for no reason because i questioned it i knew that i did that on purpose uh, I knew that the steps that I had taken prior to that, I did on purpose. And I did it for a reason. And that reason uh, would not, anything that I do would not be in vain. And I needed to know that. I think that has a lot to do with control and, and trying to look towards the end of the picture, to look toward the end uh, uh, further on down. But it was important for me at that moment to see that I didn't do it for nothing. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, uh, uh, the God that I found in Alcoholics Anonymous got a little bit bigger that day. Uh, and, and, and I needed that at that time. I needed that at that time. Uh, and, 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 and there's no way uh, that I can talk enough about the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. I, I believe uh, the path that that us us members have been given is the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. I heard it, and I reacted. I reacted quickly, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that I, I can sit here and talk enough about the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, and 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 I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attempt to, and and, and I, I believe in uh, I believe that when I came to the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, my uh, my problem was not alcohol. I I, I believe that uh, uh, my main problem was a, a separation 
uh, was a separation from from uh, God and people. Uh, and 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 I think that there's two sides to every coin. Uh, and if that be a big problem uh, for me, then I, I think the solution is a constant unity to God and the people. Uh, and 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 uh, I've I've done a lot, I've taken a lot of actions in this program out of fear. I won't lie, I have. And you know what? I've I've probably uh, done a lot of work. out of fear. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, I, I don't uh, say this boastingly. I, I say it because uh, I, I think that it's, in, it's important that I notice and I realize my, my growing spiritually. Uh, but a, a day came. No, that's the microphone. <laughs> that's the microphone, not a phone. That's me meddling with stuff up here. <laughs> Touching, I have to touch on it. <laughs> you know what? The uh, the tw- and I, I love. Uh, you know what? I, I I heard my friend, my new friend Paul, back here. I was in a meeting with him last night, man. He pointed out and. And I love the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I love the 12 and 12. I love our literature that we've been given. And, and, and he mentioned something about the warnings that, that, uh, <clears throat> that's in the books, warnings that are written. And, and I've just now sort of picked them up and I'm noticing the warnings that, that <clears throat> the people who wrote the book gave us. And, and, uh, and, and there's a, uh, one of my favorite readings out of the 12 and 12. Uh, it's a huge warning for me, and, and it says, it, I believe it's on page 174, and it says, unless each AA member follows to the best of his or, his or her ability, I was suggested 12 steps to recovery, and here comes the warning. It says, he almost certainly signs his own death warrant. Uh, and it says, his drunkenness and disillusion are not penalties inflicted by people in authority, they result to his personal disobedience to spiritual principles. And when I read that, when I read that, I, I wrote down in my journal, John, you better learn to adhere to spiritual principles. I did. I, I understood the warning. I heard it, man. <clears throat> and, 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 and a little bit further on down, and, and it, it gets even better. It says, so we of AA do obey spiritual principles. At first, bless you. At first, (laughs) bless you, young man. It says, so we of AA do obey spiritual principles. At first, because we must, and ultimately, because we love the kind of life that such obedience brings. And it says, great suffering and great love are AA's disciplinarians. We need no others. And and the reason I mention that is because there was a time in my sobriety, in my recovery, when I noticed that I wasn't taking actions based on fear anymore. Uh, I was taking them out of love. Uh, and, and I don't know exactly what love for what. Uh, I know... I... It's 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 strange for me uh, to have so much compassion and and care and concern for other people, uh, and and I would be lying if I said that I've never worked with an alcoholic because I know that in order to to keep it I must give it away. I believe when you people say that, so I've taken that action in fear of this happening to me. Uh, <clears throat> And, and I can't say exactly the day when it happened, but I was no longer afraid, and, and I am not, and it's important that you know this. Uh, beer, alcohol, liquor does not frighten me in any way, shape, or form uh, today. I frighten me a lot of times. I scare me. Uh, but I don't take actions uh, because I'm scared. I'm not even scared of the consequences uh, that that liquor causes me. 
Uh, and I mean that when I say it. I mean it when I say it, that uh, the consequences would be exactly the same. Uh, the program of Alcoholics Anonymous saved me from an alcoholic death. And, and us alcoholics are not real good at dying immediately. <laughs> we have a high threshold for pain and can, can take lots of pain. And let me tell you that I lived on the, the, the streets of Memphis, Tennessee long enough to where I could still be living on them now. I had learned how to stay warm and not freeze in the wintertime and how to live outside and not burn up in the summertime. And I could still, I would still be living and dying that alcoholic death. And that does not scare me one bit today. Not one bit. And, and, and that's beautiful for me. That's beautiful for me. Something had just come. You know what? It came to me, man, that, that <clears throat> you know what, the past couple of days, the past couple of days, I've never, I've never uh, taken down uh, notes or anything for me to read off of when I speak, uh, but for the past few days, I've just been writing down words on, on Alex's and Sarah's invitation that they sent me. Out of uh, I go to meetings, just words, uh, uh, and 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 you know what I love in the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, it describes a great description of an alcoholic, and I love it. It says that when an alcoholic takes any alcohol whatsoever into his system, something happens. <laughs> Is what it says. Is what it says. Something happens. Boy, is that powerful, man. Uh, take it and run with it. Well, let me tell you. There's two sides to every coin. And let me tell you that when a person takes the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, so does something happen. So does something happen. When a when a person accepts what this program has to offer wholeheartedly, something happens. Something happens. And I'm I'm more grateful for it than I am for anything on this earth. Let me tell you that uh, uh with the acceptance of, of of the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, I'll tell you what a big piece uh, for me was. Is I when I came into AA, I was 24 years old, and and I had a three year old girl, a beautiful daughter, the most beautiful girl that's ever walked the earth, uh, and 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 I had seen her maybe once when I come into AA, uh, and 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 it hit me one day. That all the love you have in your heart for your little girl, John, is not enough to keep you sober. Uh, and, and let me tell you, I have an amazing mom who would kill or die for me. Uh, and I love her more than anything on earth, man. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, I accepted one day that all the love that I have in my heart for my mama is insufficient to keep me separated from alcohol within by itself. And you take both of those loves and put them together, you'd have a whole lot of love. And that is still not good enough to keep me separated from alcohol. And I'll tell you, man, when you get through, and nobody said that to me, it, it hit me, but you get a sucker to accept that fact, uh, and, 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 and I promise you, you won't have to tell him twice. I'll tell you that, plus a couple of other things, you won't have to tell that person twice to do anything. He'll be willing to take some suggestions, man. He will. And, and let me tell you, I can't go over and say everything uh, that 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 uh, has happened to me uh, in sobriety. I, I, I really wish that I could. I really wish that I could. Uh, and, 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 and it's important 
that I say it hasn't taken not one thing spectacular. Uh, I'm not capable of spectacular feats. Uh, I'm not a very bright individual, if you ask me. I'm not the brightest crayon in in any box. Uh, I'm, I'm, and and if you ask me, I'm, I'm kind of slow, man. Uh, uh, but I'll tell you, I, I, I was real willing to do what somebody I knew was no longer suffering. Like, uh, like I believed he told me he had, uh, I was willing to take the same actions that he had taken to get free. To get free, man. To get free. And, and, and that's what I wanted. And let me tell you that, uh, it has been worth. And, 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 and I would, uh, I've made a lot more remains, uh, than just those two I spoke of. I've paid a lot more money back than I have time to sit here and tell you guys. Uh, and let me tell you, I have not missed one, I hadn't had to miss one meal. I hadn't woke up one morning without, uh, having coffee and a Marlboro and, and Bob Dylan to listen to when I wake up in the morning. And, and, and no, that's okay, that's okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Is that because y'all are Bob Dylan fans? No? Okay. <clears throat> uh, but let me tell you that, that it, everything, everything that I have done in order to get and stay sober, uh, to say that it has been well worth it is not saying enough. Uh, is not saying enough. Uh, I, I think that a gift, a gift that I'm I'm given on a one day at a time basis, man, is 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 I wake up in the morning, man, and, and sometimes I'm reminded uh that uh that I have been this close uh to surrendering to a life in which I could fit my supper in two pockets. And if you eat out of a soup line or a soup kitchen, you can fit your entire supper in two pockets. People ain't supposed to fit their supper in your pockets. That's that's not right, man. Your, your life is taking a wrong turn. When when that's a fact in your life. And I'll tell you that uh, uh, that I'm able to to to. Uh, to know, to know that some people don't make it. Uh, the disease of alcoholism not only takes people's lives, it ruins entire families. And I am no exception. I'm no exception to that, man. And I see that as clear as it can be seen. And I know it. I, I, I just, refuse I refuse for some man to to go to my mama and say he told me to tell you that he's sorry and he loves you I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna let that be my life man I refuse to I refuse to and and I'm gonna close and you know what I hope that each and every person sitting in this room this room refuses to and takes takes what they want. And let me tell you, I was talking about it earlier. When I was done drinking, it's not a man big enough in this room to have kept me from finding something different. I'm going to tell a joke and shut up. And, and this joke has a good point to it. Uh, so after I'm done with it, please let me tell you the point. <laughs> there's a, a chapel service going on and, and it's about this big and uh, there's a priest and he decides to have some fun on this day and uh, he says out of all you people in this room how many people have sex three times a year and uh, a large portion of the service raises their hands and 
And he says, okay, okay, uh, out of the rest of you, how many of you have sex only twice a year? And about the other portion, the entire other half raised their hand. All of them were probably lying, but uh, he said, he said, just to, he said, just to humor you guys, he said, out of all of you, how many of you have sex only, only one time a year? And this one guy in the back jumping and raising his hand. And the guy says, hold on, man, I don't think you understood me. He says, uh, I said, uh, I said, how many of you have sex only one time a year? And he says, me, preacher, and it's today, it's today, preacher. <laughs> it's going to be today. And, and <laughs> that, that I say that joke. I say that joke because every day I wake up and the thing that comes to my mind is it's today is the day. Today is the day in which I can do something that will have an effect on the rest of on the rest of my life. And I hope that each and every one of us in, in this room knows that he can do that. He and she can do that. Thank you all for allowing me to share with you. I'm glad to Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.